you know what I like about it is it, it, it seems to harken back to the original roots of good education, which is the wanting to share the knowledge. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody's making any money off this yet. I know there are people who hope to monetize it. But right now, it's the sharing of knowledge. It's the sharing of, of learning. Yeah, no, one of the interesting things we talked earlier about the the MOOC, about, about the forums on the MOOCs and, and the discussions on the forums on the MOOCs, and, and a very common theme that I kept seeing again and again in the MOOC discussions would, you know, someone would start to complain and flame me or flame Paul occasionally, mostly it was me, and that was my <laughs> job to take the flames, about something, a problem was too difficult or something else or, or whatever. There were all sorts of complaints, because people grumble, some people like to grumble, and some people grumble anyway. But it wasn't long before somebody would come in the forum and say, look, this isn't about a certificate. This is learning for its own sake. If you don't want to learn, go away. It's the kind of self-regulating that way. <laughs> you know, actually, one of the upsides, uh, and it's sort of amusing, but it's true. Every physical class I've given with more than about 15 students, there's always one student for some reason, doesn't seem to want to be there. You know, I think it's just why they're there, I don't know. But there's always someone who seems who's complaining and nothing is ever right for them. What happened in the forums, that turned out to be very self-regulating because as soon as someone started to complain, three or four people would jump in immediately, shut them up and say, look, we're not going to put up with this. We're voting down your comment because the forums have a vote up and vote down mechanism. So in it would quickly get minus 10 votes and that person would either shut up or disappear in whatever they were corrected. The forums were very self-regulating yeah. and regulated in a really nice direction because there's all of these people, the majority of them, I think the vast majority, were there because they just wanted to learn some mathematics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, interestingly, that reminds me of when I took my first class in logic. And we had the one student who questioned everything, which is great to an extent. But when the entire <laughs> class wants to get up and leave, it's not a good thing anymore. He's probably anymore. a professor of logic now. <laughs> <laughs> <He probably is. laughs> Sounds like me, actually. <laughs> was I in your class? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I was sleeping at that point. But, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it seems like... Had the students been able to have some vote in how the direction mm -hmm. that was taking, I think it would have been a lot more productive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a, in a sense, I, I mean, I think there's still a lot of design challenges on how to, around how to make MOOCs better and how to make MOOC forums better and the, and the dialogue better. But in a certain sense, it's actually in some ways closer to being a more of a dialogic mm -hmm. um, kind of seminar learning format than than many traditional courses in the academy are. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of university courses, even here at Stanford, are professor gets up and lectures. Maybe there's a section where a TA basically gets up and lectures. Um, but there's not a lot of chance, unless you do it outside of class, to interact with other students. Mm -hmm. In the MOOCs, um, there's, there, I mean, that's kind of built into the platform. And not everybody uses it, but the people who do are actually having a real kind of dialogic learning experience that otherwise they may not get, be able to get. Yeah, it's also the case, in a physical class, you've got a seminar, you very often get one or two students who dominate. They're usually mm -hmm. guys for one thing. I mean, there's, there's well-known gender differences that female students tend to sit and think and then they just don't get, their, get a word in edgeways. Right. But if you're on a forum, you know, the old story on the internet, nobody knows if you're a dog, you can, you've got all the time in the world to craft your response because in a real conversation, uh, you know, I never do well in real conversations because I'm actually, you may not believe this, but I'm a slow thinker. I mean, we're just talking now, that's different. Right. But if it's, if it's meaty stuff, I like to think about my answer before I give it. So I almost never get to speak anything because I'm still thinking of, 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 mm -hmm. of the way to express it. But online, you can take half an hour, think of your response and type it in and you're as open as anybody else. You're as free as it was. And even if someone doesn't like you, the worst that's going to happen is there's going to be a negative comment, which is not as bad as someone just standing up and saying, you're stupid, I don't believe that. So there's a, a democratizing freedom comes when you take it online that you don't always get in the physical class. So it's not all negatives right. when you go from physical to, to online.